All right, welcome back, everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. This is Wicked Sources. I'm your host, Mike, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. Every week, I bring you news info that could affect you and alternative products that can bring a little comfort to your life. If you find some value in what I'm sharing with you today in this episode, smash the like for the algos and sub if you want more. So today, I was looking over new products and their current development and noticed several new THC variants that have come to market already. I really wondered what these were, naturally, it's my job, but I also figured you were thinking the same thing. So what are these new variations? I'm going to take a minute and name some of these so that we can just get it out of the way and then start talking about what they actually are. So Delta 8, I've talked about it numerous times. Delta 9 is what we all know about. That is traditional cannabis. Delta 10. And then we have THCO, THCP, and THCV. And of course, HHC vapes. So now that we have listed these, let's figure out what the differences are between them, because there are going to be subtle differences. Before we begin, it's important to note that all of these variations are legal in most states and are 100% hemp derived, which is the national standard. And uh, the production of any cannabinoids using hemp is protected by the farm bill that was passed in 2018. So Let's start with the first one, the Delta 8, a milder version of traditional cannabis and it's Delta 9. It's said to offer a mild high, great for relaxing and offers users an alternative to the intense experience that traditional cannabis normally offers. We all know that Delta 9 is traditionally what is in all cannabis, going back decades and decades. So. We're going to just go ahead and skip that one, but we want to note that it is still a controlled substance and it is listed that way by the federal government until further notice. Delta 10 is one that's in question. So it is a cam cannabinoid found in trace amounts of the cannabis plant, like regular THC, the Delta 9. It can get you high, but it is less potent than Delta 9. This makes it similar to Delta-8, another cannabinoid that is less potent than regular THC. So what's the difference between 8 and 10? Why do we need one or the other? Um, is one better than the other? So Delta-10 can get you high, although it is much less potent than Delta-9. Delta-10 is commonly reported to provide energizing effects, whereas Delta-8 is reported to be more sedative. This is uh, this goes back to the understanding that sativa is more of a head high and indica is more of a body high. And so this is where I think they're distinguishing the two. To put it in perspective, delta 8 is more like an indica. Delta 10 is more like a sativa. They have two very different vibes to them. People who want to use a sleep aid, as an example, have used delta 8. And delta 10 gives you more creativity or perspective. Although many of us only recently heard about um, some of these things, it's still uh, growing rapidly. This industry is expanding at a rate uh, that we've never seen before in any other space. And this is alarming, exciting, it's many different things. So let's move on to THCO. You may or may not have heard about it. However, the U.S. military began studying its effects as long ago as 1949. That's how long we've known about it. They observed it. Uh, it they observed that it eroded dogs' muscle coordination twice as much as conventional delta nine THC. Why are you know why were they experimenting on dogs? Only God knows. THCO didn't appear on the DEA's radar until nearly 30 years later. In 78, DEA agents discovered a clandestine lab in Jacksonville, Florida. They had combined a cannabis extraction lab with acidic uh, anhydride, but over the following 10 years, THCO did not enter the illicit market. Since it didn't seem to be a growing problem, the Federal Drug Agency declined further investigation into the unusual compound. I guess it just wasn't a concern since it wasn't creating problems, or maybe it's a um, a production situation, meaning that they couldn't really produce much of it 
so it would never uh, saturate any market. So they probably let it go. Then we have THCP, short for Delta 9 Tetrahydra Cannabiferol. Don't know, I don't know if I said that right, but I tried. THCP is the new and strongest cannabinoid to date, derived from hemp like the rest. It carries psychoactive effects and euphoric feelings associated with the typical properties associated with cannabis use. It has said, it has been said that THCP is stronger than THC. That's kind of scary. I mean, concentrates are already powerful enough, but, you know, we're trying to add to that with something stronger. And then finally, we have THCV, that is V for victory. This one is a little bit harder to pronounce. Tetrahydra cannabivirin is a cannabinoid in cannabis that offers a unique array of effects and medical benefits that sets it apart from other cannabinoids, but it provides a variety of pronounced and altogether different effects. THCV is an appetite suppressant. This is what they have discovered, and this is what they're sharing. In contrast to THC, THCV may dull the appetite. This may be good for consumers focused on weight loss. But THCV should be avoided by patients uh, treating appetite loss or anorexia. It can, and it may, help with diabetes. Research shows promise in THCV's ability to regulate blood sugar levels and reduce insulin resistance. It may reduce panic attacks as well. It appears to curb anxiety attacks in PTSD patients without suppressing emotion. It may help with Alzheimer's disease, tremors, motor control, brain lesions associated with Alzheimer's disease. Uh, They have appeared to improve by THCV, but the research is still in progress. And then it can stimulate bone growth. And I'm curious about this one, so I might dive a little more into it later. But because it promotes the growth of new bone cells, THCV is being looked at for osteoporosis and other bone-related conditions. All right, so let's take a minute and summarize everything. Let's recap real quick. We have Delta-8, Delta-10, THCO, THCP, and THCV. Delta-8 is a milder version than Delta-9 and less intense. Delta-10 is even milder than Delta-8, but it is harder to produce and is expensive. Then we have THCO. It's been around a while and isn't very prevalent, but it's stronger than Delta-9 and Delta-10. It's synthesized, and if its ingredients aren't the best, can be dangerous. Labs that test THCO products often find 10 to 15% of unidentified materials that are in there. Then we have THCP, said to be 30 times stronger than Delta 9 THC. And then we have THCV. Its research is showing it can be used for bone cell growth, treating diabetes, and helps suppress appetite. This is the tree of the cannabinoids, and most of these are synthetic. So under the DEA's laws, it can be synthetic as long as it's derived from hemp. So what this means is that this has given the the industry a way to tap into new applications new variations of these chemical compounds that we know is THC. Mind-blowing, really. You know, just 10 years ago, we only knew about the basics of the cannabinoids, that there was THC, CBD, CBN, CBA, um, and maybe a handful of others or less. Now we're seeing that there's a lot more when you can give access to researchers to kind of play around with it on a chemical level and discover all these new things. I don't know which one may actually benefit you. Do your own research. I realize that um, for me, as I do the research to figure out like what are these new products, 
Are they going to be effective in any specific area? Because that is generally what I lean towards. I'm interested in products that can solve a problem for somebody. And then I test them and then I hand them out to people I know with certain cases to see if they're seeing results. And then we kind of find consensus. Is it worth it? Is it not worth it? All in all, even before we make it to that point, we're doing a lot of background checking into manufacturers and their uh, testing processes and safety is a big concern from the very beginning, even before we make it to the testing phase. So those are all the new THC variations that are out there. Hope this helped. I'll catch you guys on the next one.